gentlemen, welcome to the TNA recipe. To my left, the one and only Mr. Brian Red Jones. Yo, yo, what's good, wrestling fans? What's good, WCC fam? What's going on, Red? And of course, joining him, myself, the one, the only, Cibernetico. So let's start it off, Red. So TNA still stuck, I guess. They're still stuck in good old London, England. Uh, apparently, Jeff Hardy couldn't cross the border again. And no, he's not Mexican. But then again, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, man. So they started off with an awesome fucking match. I, I thought it was pretty pretty decent. It was fucking Hernandez, Chavo, Joseph Park, and James Storm going up against Daniel, Kaz, Aries, and Bobby Roode. Red, what you like about this match, man? Tell me about it. Man, that was uh, that was an awesome match. You know, we know all these guys. I mean, all these guys. I mean, every every last one of the guys are good. I mean, even you know, you know, Joseph Park is. I mean, who don't know he's a bitch, but you know. I mean, get all these guys in the ring, especially on the other side with Daniels and Kazarian. I mean, they're they're two of the best. We know what they can do when they get in the ring and. I always love seeing them, you know, especially going up against James Storms because he, he's one of my favorites right there. I got to say, I, I, you know, we're not related, but I, I, I got to admit, I love my big brother Hernandez when he does the AKA, the bounce. He hit he hit Daniels with the bounce. That was sick. Send him flying through the ropes. I don't know what it is. I just like seeing this big dude just run run down people like that. I don't know about you. What do you think about Hernandez, though? Is he growing to you? I mean, I've I've always liked Hernandez ever since the L A L A X days. Exactly right. Yeah. Something about it. I don't know. It's just something about the dude. It's like it cracks me up just to see a big muscular dude just come by, right, knock I your mean, ass out. <laughs> and, and and you know what I'm saying. And also, he you know I like when he does the shoulder tackle over the rope when he flies over the rope. I'm like, damn, you no, know, not too many big dudes can do that. Exactly. You know, that's one thing. Um, when he did uh, this exhibition show up in Mexico, people were just like, the whole crowd was like, like, you know, out here, you hear you, you hear someone do something crazy. The first thing that pops out of their mouth is like, holy shit, holy shit. Now, it kind of cracked me up. But when Hernandez did this, this super plancha off the top ropes in Mexico, they're like, ay, güey, ay, güey. <laughs> I was cracking up when I fucking heard that though. But Hernandez, hey, you're, you're a fucking beast, Chavo. You, you know you can't go around with Chavo. God oh, damn, Joseph know. Park. Joseph Park. Oh man, that was a fucking funny ending. Try to climb into the second top rope and and try to hit a uh, somewhat of a frog splash. <laughs> yeah, that was hilarious. By the way, uh, Hernandez, Chavo, and pa- Chavo Park and Storm ended up picking the win after this one. Up next, now this one was a little interesting. Um, Robbie E going up against the winner of I guess their boot is it their boot camp or yeah, is it uh, TNA, their gut check? TNA TNA's uh, London uh, England's boot camp. Russian Damn. Boot camp I'll, shit. Yeah. I'll be honest with you. Um, I really don't know nothing about good old Rockstar. Uh, apparently he's a high flyer going up against uh, Robbie E in this ex- another exhibition match which was which was pretty 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 decent. Robbie E sounding his moves as always. Oh um, man, a lot of people don't like Robbie E, but he's actually been growing to me for a little bit. Uh, what you think about Robbie E? It's it's you know, the guy's got skills. It's just his fucking gimmick that's annoying to me. I just can't stand his gimmick. I'm like they need to scrap that and give him another gimmick cuz that whole Jersey Shore shit is just worn out. That that it is. Oh man! And you know, speaking of Jersey Shore, you know, it kind of reminds us of somebody from the other company, from the good old E. You know, Zack Ryder. Uh, you know, I think bo- I think you know what? Uh, sad to say, it, did Jersey Shore just kill both careers? Pretty much. Pretty much, right? Yeah. I mean, that's what it seems like. I, I mean, Jer- Jersey, Shore, Jersey Shore got canceled, so apparently, like, both gimmicks are, like, they're just so stale now. Uh, a lot of people don't really know too much about Robbie E. I was watching the documentary called, um, I believe it was called, oh, uh, Card Subject to Change, I believe the 
I, I could be wrong about that, about that one. There's a documentary out there. It has Robbie E in his local in his local indie days. Um, my God, this guy he could go, man. And uh, a lot of people didn't realize about that. People just thought, oh, okay, this guy just has some goofy ass gimmick that you know, just like whatever. But the guy could go, man. I don't see how TNA could push this guy to be something serious later on in the future. What you think about that? I mean. Uh, it would be kind of hard because of this gimmick. It'd be kind of hard to take him seriously. Right, exactly, right. Yeah, so it's just like I don't know, and and and, and it's gonna be kind of hard for me to take Rob Terry uh, serious. It's gonna take a little while for me to take him serious again because it seems like they're you know getting him away from Robbie E, turning him back face and whatever. That's right, that's right. By the way, for all you people that listen to our show on YouTube, don't forget, you guys can also call in and listen to the show as well. The number to call is 760-569-7676, access 200-446-POUND. Once again, that number is 760-569-7676 access code 20446 and don't forget to hit the pound at the end because people sometimes ask about that hey how come i can't get in dude you forget to hit the pound um real quick um from uh do you, do you see anything with this guy rockstar i mean does he remind you of a of a and once again not to mention these guys but hey you know this is strict tna show but does he kind of remind you of a you know a, aka evan Bourne? Yeah, he kind of does. I mean, and if they they utilize him right within the X division, I think he'll 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 be good as long as they utilize him right. That's what's up. Um, let's go down. Let's get a few people in here. Uh, we got a uh, good old Brandon Dooling coming to you live from Missouri. Uh, Brandon, what what you think about TNA tonight so far? Well, I must say, um, whenever you get for starters for the eight man tag one. Whenever you got bad influence in a match, you're guaranteed for some you're guaranteed for some gold. Right. And then when it gets to Hernan- when it gets to Chavo, Hernandez, Storm, and Parks, one thing I have to say, I was surprised they didn't put Magnus in this match instead of Parks, but that's that's another story. Right. But um, okay. I gotta say, all four of all eight men, all eight men, damn good, damn good. And yeah. another thing about Hernandez, I have to say. Why do you think he's called Super Max? Not many big men can do. If y'all remember the X Division, the tag team Ultimate X match that LAX had with Triple uh, X back at Battle for Glory 2007, remember Hernandez was the one that climbed on the ropes and retrieved the X. So there's yes, no telling how athletic the dude is. That's what's up. So um, you also heard us talk about Robbie E going against this guy Rockstar. Like I said, um, either. It's their boot camp, like Red says. Uh, what do you think camp. about Rock? Yeah, what do you think about uh, Rockstar so far? I forgot his last name. Um, I'm sorry, but... Rockstar or... Spud. Yeah, something like that. Okay. Um. Hmm. I don't want to. I don't want to go too high on him yet because, I've, especially if they were exhibition stars, I'd have. I had a bad habit of always going too high on him too fast. But he didn't look too bad. But. Um, going against Robbie E, he probably didn't have to showcase all of his abilities. No, no disrespect to Robbie E, aka Rob Echoes. Right. And a little side note, I heard a little side note. There's a little bit of information I know about uh, Ro- or Robbie E. Back in his indie days, when I, I can't remember what company it was, he and he was teamed with someone else when they were called the Ballot Victorians. And one of the biggest things about him during his indie days was his feud with his brother, Dan, when Dan was a member of a team called the Heavyweights, which culminated in a no-holds-barred style match where he knocked the hell out of his brother, literally, to the point where his brother could no longer go, could no, or could no longer continue in the match. It was a very brutal feud, very, uh, and it was all about Dan always trying to impress Rob because Rob was the older brother of the two, and he didn't want Dan to get involved in the business. So there was a lot of... Because it, it was in one of my old wrestling magazines that I still keep. So just a little bit of, little bit of info uh, for uh, Rob Echoes. And the dude can go. Yes, he just can. Making him a poor man, Zack Ryder, and Zack Ryder's also getting stale, I agree. But making him a poor man, Zack Ryder, or better yet, 
making him a love child of Zack Ryder and the situation. <laughs> I'm surprised they let him be. The gimmick, why, gimmick wise, it was a travesty for him to be X Division champion. Wasn't for the gimmick, I'd have no problem with him being X Division champ. Right. But, um, hmm. but not bad, not bad at all. Thank you, Dylan, for that information. Uh, moving on, uh, guys, put your pants back up because guess what's coming up next? We got a fatal four way: Miss Tessmacher going up against Tara, going up against Gail Kent, and of course, Velvet Sky. Red, take it away. First of all, let me start off by saying, WWE, this is how you put on a women's match. Take notes from TNA. This is how you put on a women's match. This match was fucking excellent from beginning to end. I mean, you have Gail Kim. I mean, oh, my God. We all know what Gail Kim could do. She is one of the top. The first TNA knockout at that, champion at that, I mean, you have her, you have Tara, you had Velvet Sky, and that fine-ass Miss Tessmacher. I mean, this Damn. match was this match was awesome. I mean, they 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 pulled it out, and as you know, now we have crowned a new TNA Knockout Champ in Velvet Sky. Congratulations to you, Velvet. Yeah. Let you the go, girl. Loose. I gotta admit, Red, this fucking match was you. You are you. You nailed it right on the on the coffin on that one, man. This this match was so fucking awesome. Um, I really, I really truly do believe that uh, this is the way you do a, an actual you know female match, straight up. Um, this match basically was a, a, a little more interesting than I thought. I, I'll be honest with you. I really thought, and I was really hoping for Gail Kim to take take up the win on this one, but eventually they're going to go with Velvet on this. Not bad of a choice, though, either. Uh, unfortunately, I had read a spoiler, so I already knew she was going to win. That's what's up. <laughs> Brandon Dooling, what you think about the Fatal 4-Way? First of all, uh, here's a little interesting point about it. They were the l- These four women were the last four knockouts champs, because think about it. Velvet lost the belt to Gale. Gale lost the belt to Tess. Tess lost the belt to Tara. Tara just lost it back to Velvet. A little bit of an interesting side note there. Damn, I didn't know that. Thank you. And I must, and I must say, um, it was a hell of a match, you know? And, and I agree. WWE needs to take notes. Not that they ever do. I mean, just amazing, amazing back and forth action. And uh, congrats to Velvet becoming a two-time champ. Stay sexy. Keep the pigeons flying loose. Damn, that's right. By, by the way, can you please switch back to the leather? I think everyone would be happy. <laughs> oh man, that was a good one right there. You know, you're, you're absolutely right about that one, Dwayne. Fuck. Uh, what is it about leather and women that make it look good? Hmm. She can Red. pull it off. Damn, I don't even know if Catwoman can pull it off as good as her. Uh oh. That's just my opinion. That's my opinion. Red, is that a challenge? I don't know. Is it? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> it, it, wait a minute. It, it depends on who who's playing Catwoman, though. <laughs> true, 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 true. Sorry, sorry. But, yeah. But, so anyway, what? amazing match. Um, hell of a finish. But what did surprise me is, though, that Tara got eliminated first. Huh. A little bit of a, little bit of a surprise there. Right. Is there any chance they're building this up? So, I mean, Tara was a champ on this match. Uh, she ended up losing. Is there any way we're going to see a Velvet Tara feud in the future? Well, you have someone that just won the belt versus versus a a record time a record multi time champ, and I don't I don't know. It, we definitely could. But I did find it interesting that they that uh, the last two came down to Velvet and Gale. I don't know if it'll go back to that being a feud, but who knows? We'll see. Something interesting well, is bound to develop out of this. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure she'll get her rematch at a uh, lockdown. Mm. Not so. Velvet and Tara in a cage. Hmm. Put me in the middle of that one. <laughs> <laughs> So now I hey, hear you just, say that. <laughs> just put me in the middle of Tara's butt cheeks. It's all good. Fuck. 
right? She uh, no I, like I, I, hey, what what is it about these older chicks? No, no offense, not calling Tara old or anything, but what or you know what? I chick? I think I have the perfect solution for your for your question. Have you ever heard of the have you ever heard of the wine ripens with age argument? That's exactly how you can describe Tara. She's like a fine wine that ripens with age. Damn, Julian, you know what? I hardly agree with you, but I gotta agree with you on that one. Matt props on that one. Good choice, buddy. Good choice. Hell yeah. Moving on. Now, this next match kind of got my attention, but at the same time made me go, hmm. And I'm talking about Samoa Joe going up against Garrett Bischoff. Gentlemen, what you think about this match? And then I'll let you know what I'm thinking about it. I'm going to have to say, Garrett kind of surprised me in this match. I mean, he was actually had some go in this match. I'm like, wow, really? Hmm. Dooling? Um, I thought it was going to be a damn massacre, but uh, Garrett kind of proved me wrong. I have to give him credit for that. Because I thought it was because I thought it was pretty much going to look like how Samoa Joe beat the crap out of Christopher Daniels in uh, early 2005. I thought it was going to be that bad, but but I was wrong. Okay. <sighs> well, <laughs> well, here's the deal. Here, here's my deal with Joe and and Garrett. Now, is it just me, or is it the fact that Joe is still being punished for what he did almost two years ago? Which was? The fact that he ran into the the damn truck and started cussing out everybody and threatening every, everybody. He gets basically suspended in real life, by the way. He got he really did get suspended Ooh. as well for doing that. But, right. I mean... There's minute, There's times when... You, I was about to say minutes. But there's times when you actually see Joe at a good high peak thinking, uh-oh, 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 here's a push, here's a push. And then it's like, back down again. Here's another push, here's another push. And it's like, back down again. It's like They like getting... They like raising his hopes up like his weight. Pardon me. Exactly. No disrespect to him. No disrespect. You know they what? like I told raising you him up like his weight, but unlike his weight, his push goes down constantly. Damn, Dooling, you're on fire tonight. You know what? I totally agree with you again. I totally agree with you. It's like they're pushing his hopes. Oh, shit. I just got the tag team titles. I just got the TV title. I just did this. I just did and like. Wah, but, you wah, know what? but you know what the epitome of that is? They had him tap out to Jeff Hardy. No disrespect to Jeff Hardy. But when's the last time you saw Jeff Hardy make anybody tap? Never. I'm you can go back to his WWE days. I'm not so sure he made anybody tap there either. I, I, I got to read with you again. Kurt Angle right, has a hard time making this mofo tap, and Jeff Hardy just does it in a random match like that? You can tell Joe is getting punished. Very much so. What do you think about this, Red? Joe being punished or not? Hell yeah, because I'm like, man, this dude should have done being TNA World Heavyweight Champion a long time ago. And you, right. and you let him be undefeated his first 18 months. Think about that. And he wasn't beating scrubs either. I mean, but, but I got I mean, but can TNA blame him for the rain? I mean, look at the way they they doing him. I mean, they treating him shitty. So I mean, hell, I don't blame him. Um, gentlemen, uh, so what do you think about Garrett Bischoff? Is, is he like actually picking up the pace, or is he still green? Would you say? Would you guys feel stay? Would you guys say he's still green, basically? <clears throat> Yeah, he's still a little shitty green. He, he's picking it up, but uh, hopefully this, I don't know. Hey, um, he, he, he is picking it up, but I got to say he does have a ways to go. Very noticeably, he has a ways to go. So I think turning him, hmm. turning him heel would, would do good for his career. He needs to. I think so, too. I think so, too. He needs to. He is a bishop, by the way. He is a bishop, so... Yeah, it's, a, it's, yeah. it's already coded in his DNA. Exactly. This next match... Oh, by the way, Joe ended up picking the match via disqualification. Uh, Wes Briscoe decided to help Garrett out real quick. Uh, <laughs> Joe, Joe with the win on a DQ. But moving oh, on... Oh, wait a minute. Don't forget to mention that Kurt Angle came out there to save him. Oh, that's now, right. Go in, ahead, Red. In... in Issued a challenge to uh, West Briscoe. Now we know there's going to be the cyborg. Did he say West or Garrett? The, uh, to West. Oh yeah, he yeah he said West. 
Yeah, so now we know it's going to be the Cyborg versus Wes Briscoe in a steel cage. I'd say call him the Olympic Cyborg, personally. Didn't mean to cut you off. And, and uh, not there. Let's get ready to rumble! Sorry. Go ahead. Didn't mean to cut you off like that. I got, I got to say... I gotta say, oh, it's my bad, Red. But I gotta real say this real quick. The cyborg, really? <laughs> well, if you think about his toughness and the fact that he that he's had multiple neck injuries, including the broken neck that he had while he won the Olympic, when he won his Olympic gold medal, the same neck that he had problems with when he faced Brock Lesnar in an amazing match at WrestleMania 19, the same neck that uh, that uh, Aces Nates almost took out. That Mike hmm. Knox effed up repeatedly with that hammer, and you and he still comes back. I don't see why you can't call him that. Red, right? I mean, he's a wrestling fucking machine. Exactly. That, he, there you go. I mean, that I that I agree. He is a beast. We all we've been saying that over and over and over and over and over for the past TNA recipes. He uh, may not Kurt be in his spot. Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle is a real wrestling machine. He may not be in his prime, but he can still wrestle circles around many of the other talents, I think. Exactly. That's moving on, mo- moving on, uh, this next match, I got tired of it, dude. I got tired of it. Kenny King, I love you and everything. You're my fucking bro. You're out here in Vegas. Dude, what the fuck is going on? This is like the... I believe the fifth time you try to go after that fucking X Division title and nothing, dude, nothing. Red, what's going on? And I wanted to say a thing. I'm uh, quite personally, I'm, I'm tired of seeing RVD with the belt. What the fuck is he? <laughs> um, you kind of had to question why he got the belt in the first place. Not that I he's mean, been a bad champion. R- I'm but... like, RVD is just like, I'm sorry, I love you, RVD, but you have gotten so fucking lazy, dude. Too lazy, coasting. man. Man, he's co- he's coasting like he's on. Like- I mean, damn, World of Fun doesn't coast like he does. Damn. Oh, Seriously. Like- Go ahead, Red. No, I'm just like, is it the fact? Does he really just want? Does he really want to be there in TNA or what? Is is what I'm trying to figure out. Hey, maybe the weed he smokes with Jack Swagger is probably slowing him down. Oh, he said it, not me. <laughs> but uh, I, I, I got to agree with you, Red, on it this one. It's on the damn RVD, RVD did get a little lazy about things, and it's like, ah, dude, it's like, it's not the same no more. This ain't your ECW days, and let's be honest, those, those days were the shit. But uh, he's yeah. not that, uh he's just like... Like, yeah, I guess I'm here in TNA. Yeah. I mean, even his Rolling Thunder is, is like, it's not oh, even God. thunder It, just, it doesn't have the same it's, thunder, it's, so to even, speak. It's not even thunder anymore. It's just a lack of loud drum. Yeah, oh, oh. <laughs> it's, it's not thunder. It's just a little bolt of a, you know, like, you know, a drum is better. Just let's go with that. Damn. Ladies and gentlemen, you are listening to the TNA Recipe. Don't forget to go to Facebook.com slash group slash Wrestling Commentary Central or, or find us on Twitter at WCC Live. That's at WCC Live. Red, we're coming into our main event. By the way, RVD won that match. Uh, by, the way, uh, by the way, Red, uh, RVD won that match uh, real quick, heading into the main event. Sting, Hulk Hogan, Bully Ray going up against... Aces of Eight, oh, Doc, so Devon, Anderson. That's what, it was, that's what it was supposed to be till Hogan got again assaulted backstage. I am so tired of seeing Sting and Bully Ray go up against Aces of Eight. This shit is just getting stale. Storyline-wise, I didn't understand what the hell Hogan was thinking. It's like, dude, you're, dude, you're, fr- dude, you're freaking over 50. Bully is injured, and Sting's been effed up by these guys before. What the hell are you thinking? God dang. Personally, myself, <sighs> you know, this is TNA recipe. I mean, we, we try to support you as much as we can, but what's going on, gentlemen out there? Seriously, what is going on? This is games too stale. This is game I mean, too damn, boring. This is like Vince or go ahead. And in the words of Bully Ray, dude, shit just got cheesy. I mean, damn, it's like are y'all are y'all trying to outdo Vince trying to 
fight Paul Heyman next Monday or some shit? As far as bad ideas? I mean, Damn, hey, dude. I mean, I mean, some of these TNA fans out there, like I say, do you want them to watch or do you actually want them to switch the channel? Because, dude, it is getting pathetic with this story. I'm like, I mean, I mean, crap. I mean, uh, here's another thing about Aces and Eights. They're, they're, they're supposed to be more vicious than the Shield, but the Shield's undefeated, and these dudes have suffered multiple losses sometimes in embarrassing ways. Y'all are supposed to be more vicious than the shield, and yet y'all can't get the damn jobs done. Damn. By the way, you bitches, y'all won the night. Y'all could have did that when I was still in the fucking fantasy league. <laughs> y'all gave me those losses, and all of a sudden the night y'all won the fucking win. <laughs> Bastards. <laughs> damn. Damn it. Uh, uh, here's, another one thing. One. here's another thing. Van Dam is the one that's got the keys to the X-Vision throne room, and you're going to keep calling yourself Kenny King? Please, get the job done before you call yourself that. Get the damn keys to the throne room, then you can talk. For those of you that, for those of you that are wondering what, uh, what uh, Big Red was talking about, uh, basically uh, we got a fantasy league going on in WCC. For more information for season number eight, which will be coming up after, after WrestleMania, after WrestleMania, once again, after WrestleMania, the WCC Fantasy League will return around the end of April, around early May, starting around that around that time period. Uh, for more information, go to facebook.com slash group slash Wrestling Commentary Central, or keep posted on, on Twitter at WCC Live. Big Red, uh, like seriously, where are we going with this story already? Like, I mean, because remember, when they come back, which is supposedly they're going, they're going to go live next week, after that, I believe the next show after that, they're going on the road. So what is up with this story? What's going on? I don't know. They need to go ahead and reveal the VP and let us know who the fuck is behind everything. I mean, they are I mean, dragging this shit on too far. Too too damn far, but I mean, I like I, the only thing I like about this is that the fact that they're willing to take a beat down, they're willing to take a loss. Okay, that's cool, but now it's just like, okay, we seen this last week, we seen something similar to this last week before that, we seen something beyond that, and it's like, okay, what's gonna happen now? What? Give me something new. Give me something to say. Oh shit! I can't believe that happened. Okay, you revealed Mike Knox was in your crew. Big deal. I believe uh, on Overload, Sam Medina, he said that, um, he said, uh, shout out to Sam Medina, by the way. Uh, he said, uh, Aces and Eights, you don't intimidate him. That 3MB in, in intimidates him more than anything. I mean, you have all these people in your group, but they don't, they don't have that one dude that stands out, like, you know, that like, puts fear in you, you know what I'm saying? Like the way a heel's supposed to do. Right. But, uh, like, it's like, it's like, what's going on, man? Like, you guys were on the right path, and it's like, now this shit's getting stale and old. And, by the way, there's a rumor out there. There's a real good rumor out there that Hogan wants another title shot. Is it possible, Red? Hogan. Yes, sir. GM Hogan. Who's he going to wrestle? That's the thing. Um... Apparently, from what people are seeing, they're like, look, they're kind of, you know, ripping off from, you know, the E with the Rock baby seeing the title, fighting twice, twice a month, basically, or once a month. So imagine Hogan doing that with us, with TNA. Hell no. I didn't even want to see him wrestle the night, so it wasn't if you think I want to see him at all. <laughs> Damn. You know, I'm a Hulkamaniac. No lie about that one. I'm a Hulkamaniac. But damn, like, it's time for Hogan to tie it up. Doing what you think about all that stuff we've been talking about right now? Hello? Yeah, what what you think about all the stuff we've been talking about right now? Uh, I can't really disagree with all that you're saying, although I will say that I wasn't a Hulkamaniac, but that's neither here nor there. Right. Just, hmm. and, and, dude, and, dude, when I first joined WCC, 
you could tell right off the bat that I was a huge TNA supporter, and I still am, but I have to admit, some of the stuff don't make no damn sense to me. It just doesn't. That's what's, that's what's up. So um, I got I got late- so what do you think about the, what do you think about the whole situation with them going on the road? Is this going to help them or is this going to decrease them? Knowing as long as they don't go to any cities that have dead crowds <clears throat> locked down, as long as they don't go to any cities or as long as the cities they go to don't have dead crowds, they should be fine. Mm-hmm. But when it gets to the point where it's dead crowds, I don't care. How bad, how great you fill up the seats. If it's a dead crowd, then that speaks more to me than any rating or any ticket sales could ever speak. Damn. That's just my opinion. Lockdown, by the way, will be, be, lockdown will be March, March, lockdown will be Sunday, March 10th at San Antonio, Texas. Big Red, will Alamo, you be attending Alamo, it? Alamo. Hey, will you be they, there? If they go to Atlanta, they go get a dead crowd. They might as well get ready for that. Uh oh. If I'm not mistaken, isn't that a Moreno's backyard, like you said? Yes, sir. Hope, yeah, hopefully, he'll, well, he'll. To, hopefully he'll be there. But uh, you know, work, work is work. Mm-hmm. Got to get that money. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, you're listening. Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to TNA Recipe. Myself, Dueling, and Big Red. Uh, be sure to join us every Thursday night right here on the TNA Recipe. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at Spawn 2011, number three. That's Spawn 20113. Uh, the number to call again is 760-569-7676. Access code 200-446-POUND. Uh, be sure to add us on Facebook at facebook.com slash groups. That's Wrestling Commentary Central. For Big Red Dueling, myself, El Cibernetico, we will see you guys next Thursday night. And oh, keep on support. Oh, oh good. One more thing. We forgot to mention. Finally, Bully Ray gets his shot at the TNA World Heavyweight title at Lockdown. Finally, dude. But the thing, see, now, I'm I'm happy for the dude. But I would be even more happy if it was Bully Ray the heel. Right. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Actually, think about it. Think about it. Seeing as how he's getting the title shot against Jeff Hardy, who's to say that he won't eventually reveal himself to be part of Aces and Eights in some swerve, if you think about it. I Who's to that say that that's not going to happen at lockdown? Considering he's not going to be with Team TNA versus the Aces and Eights, this, uh, this actually seems to me like he could be part of Aces, like he could be part of Aces and Eights. Where, where have we seen swerves like this before? Remember when Joe was taken out by the main event mafia, and then he attacked all of them, but then it was revealed he planned all the attacks with the mafia in advance. Who's to say Bully Ray didn't plan all this wedding stuff and everything like that in advance with Ace and Nates? Right. So watch know, out. Man. Exactly. Him being a heel champion could happen right at the pay-per-view, but I could be wrong as well. No, actually, you're on the right path. You're on the right path on that one. Uh, be, be on the eye for, be on, keep an eye on that one because I do see a swerve on that one. Like I said, uh, be sure to check us out every Thursday night. That's right, every Thursday night, the place to be at the TNA recipe with your host Big Red, myself, Dueling, and all the WCC family. Sometimes we'll come in and come out, but you never know. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, support your local any scene. Anytime there's a local indie show out there, go ahead and support them. It's only 10 bucks, sometimes a little more, but hey, it's still worth it. Bring out the family, bring out the kitties, bring on the beers, bring on the bitches. Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to TNA Recipe every Thursday night, and we'll see you guys next Thursday. Make sure to tune in, and once again, keep your fucking pants up because Martin, Paul Martin said so. Thank you. Good night. <laughs>